Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to video four. Unreal Concepts, Different Shaped Progress Bars. Now what do I mean by different shaped progress bars? Let's run through the example so I can show you. When I walk up to this box, we're going to get a little progress bar. And instead of being our normal left to right, right to left, a linear progress bar, it's going to be a circle. And the circle is going to complete. And I also have it changing color so you can see it going from the white to green. In addition to that, I have a health bar, which you can't see because I'm not taking damage. So let me turn that on. Let me go into my character, turn on the create health bar, and we'll go back to play. Now when we play this, we'll see this little funky green swirly thing on the bottom right. Well, that's actually my health bar. And if you've ever played the Kingdom Heart games, it might look familiar. It's missing, of course, the player and things like that. But the point is, if I go over to here, I have a pain volume, and I'm going to take damage. And it says I'm on fire. And you notice my bar is actually progressing from left to right. And then it's going to sweep around the circle. And it's basically emptying. And it's also going to change colors. And over here I actually have a gain health. Where it's going to go up and proceed to fill back up. And go from red to green. Now it's not smooth. It's not perfect. I'm not an artist. So that explains the first two about being smooth and perfect. But the point of this is to show a concept. So let's see how this works. We have two different ones here, but they are the same concept. A progress bar, if I was to close down everything I'm not using, and let me pull up my progress bars information, and let's look at, let's look at the circular progress widget. And let's grab a progress bar and put it into our scene. So progress bar, how it works is basically it's going to go from left to right or right. It's going to go whatever direction you want based on the fill percent from zero to one. And basically zero is going to be empty or zero or nothing. And one is going to be full or one or white in our example. So if you think about it in that way, if you wanted a progress bar that was say 75% full or 0.75, you might have an image where the left part here is white and the right part here is black. And if you think about it that way, you can basically mimic a progress bar by using a gradient image that goes from white to black and then cutting off your visible values. And that's basically what we're going to do. Now let me show you that. So in here we have an image and all this is is a material. We're going to use materials because we can modify materials at runtime and we can do things such as gradients and if ranges to determine how much of this we want to show. Here is our extremely awesomely organized circular progress bar of Doom. And if we look at this, this is what controls everything. If I was to go back into here and look at my health bar widget and pull this one up and look at its material, we're actually going to notice something much, much smaller. So here are, let me move this over, here are our two graphs. And actually if we look at the two graphs you'll see something familiar. This part right here is the top part of our graph and it's the same as this part. This part here is only because we're creating this circle in runtime. We're actually not using a texture we're actually just creating this out of some nodes. So let's look at how this works. At the bottom here, we're basically creating two circles. We're using the radial gradient expo exponential node to create two circles. And then we are subtracting them from each other to get this circular. If we preview this right here, you'll see this light round circle. It's what we want. And then we are taking that and we are multiplying that by 50 in order to give us a darker color. Now this was something I was using for an experiment and we don't have to worry about it. So eh, there we go, we'll delete it. So what we're doing here is inputting a circle. That's it. You could use a texture. If you wanted to create a texture to look like the circle, then you could do that. And that's actually important for our next part. Well, the, that's important for our, our other progress bar, which you'll see in a second. 
The important part for determining what we're seeing here is we're using an if node and a color gradient. This is a uh, circular circular gradient, I think it's called circular circular angular circular angular. I want to say an angular gradient. I can't really remember the name exactly. Um, but for this one, what I did was let me let me pull this up. Give me a second. There we go. And open this up. What I did was I googled for angular gradient. And once I spelled it right, I went to the images. And I visited the page on FilterForge. And FilterForge is a great place to get some different... This gives you information about different types of gradients. But what we want is the angular gradient, which is this one right here, the angle gradient. And all I did was take the image and opened it up and saved it and imported it into Unreal Engine. And what this does, if we were to look at it, let me close this down and pull up my image. We have an angle. We have a circular angle here where it goes from white at our first part here and slowly in our circular pattern goes to black here. So if you were to look at this as our circle imposed over it, we're going to have one value here for white, something around 0.5 here to indicate a gray, and then zero on this part to indicate black. And we're, gonna use, we're using that as a mask is how it works. And what we're doing is driving that with an alpha value. So if I was to take my value to zero, and this actually finished, it's nothing. 0.5 for an alpha, we're going to get that. 0.8 for an alpha, we're going to get this for a result, and it's going to continue on. Now the reason why you're not getting what you'd expect, 0.5 being the middle, zero being nothing and one being full is due to the fact that this is not a perfectly designed gradient. This is a gradient I as a non-artist got off the internet that was free to reuse. A real artist would design this properly so the gradient would have the proper values. Remember when I mentioned we would have zero, 0.5 and well technically one, 0.5 and zero for our values they'd actually design it properly. Because if you notice, we more have 0 0.5, 0 0.8, and this this area here is much too large. So it's a poorly designed gradient, but for example, because this is a concept, it works. So as you can see here, when the alpha is adjusted, and I've called it alpha, it's gonna determine how much of our bar is completed. That's why you'll notice here, I actually use 1.1 for my default value, so I get a full circle. Now our alpha is just a B on an if node. And all we're doing here is saying if the value from our texture sample is greater than or equal to zero, that means it's not black, it, do, it exists, then we're gonna go ahead and put that value out. If it's less than, we're gonna put out this value. So what that means is if our alpha is 0.5, we are saying out of this texture sample here, and I'm also flipping the texture sample as you can see here. Let's let's not flip it. Let me show you it going the other direction. Maybe that'll help a little bit. There we go. We'll do this the non-flip way. It's the circle is going to work backwards, but hey, for example, we don't care. We have our circle here, and let's zoom in a lot more because why not? Over zoom for the win. Okay, so we have. Let's close this down here. We don't need that. There we go. We have our texture values. Zero is black, one is white. And as we go around again, we have between zero and one. So in our example here, we're going to have roughly 0.5 right here because we're looking at this line here. And then this value here would be 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, all the way up to one. So this encompasses one to 0 0.6 for the color, our white output. If that value is greater than or equal to this value, which is our 0.5, then we're going to output black, a solid black. And if it's not, we're going to output a solid white. So what that's giving me is a per only a potential partial mask. When we, of course, move this back to like 0.4, 
you'll notice this changes slowly, 0.3, it changes 0.8. So we're basically telling it to only do a partial amount of this. Now you may be asking, well, why are we getting the circle? Well, we're getting the circle because we're multiplying it by the circle. So this would be probably an easier way of showing this. We'll go with 0.5, and you'll see it's going to give us back everything in this range right here because these are the values darker than 0.5. And of course, when we go to 1, you'll find these are the darkers less than 1. And for whatever reason, this top part is overblown. It's actually greater than 1. It's wider. Now we have the entire thing. We're flipping it right here. That's giving me my right to left instead of my left to right circle. And then we are multiplying that value, which is how much of our mask we want to use. We're multiplying that against our circle that we created. And that's why we get our gradient circle. So that's why when we run it, and I fill up my circle over time, we are getting a smooth circle. And to look at the smooth circle, if I was to pull up my blueprint I'm using for this, and we look at it, this is really, really simple. All I'm doing is when we overlap, I'm running a timeline that's changing the progress percentage, or the alpha value right here on the material. So all I'm doing over five seconds is changing it from zero to one. Hopefully that makes sense. Let me go ahead and save this out, and I'll show you the second part. So hopefully with that concept in mind, basically we're driving a zero to one value. Let me pull up the material, here we go. We're driving a zero to one value of a pattern. This is going to be our pattern here and a mask and multiplying them together. And we're getting a percentage based on what we have here. We are basically like I showed you on the linear lerping from our zero value to our one value using a pattern and a mask to mix them together. So you may be asking, well, how are we doing the other one? This one's pretty simple. And as you notice in here, it actually has less nodes. And it has less nodes because we're not creating our circle. We're using an image I've imported. And that's going to be right here. Remember how I said we needed a linear? We go from our zero, which is our black, to our one, which is our white. And that's what we're doing here. I have a circle. Well, I have this bar that basically I've created in Photoshop very poorly. And I've made it go from black here. And it linearly goes along our line to white. So when we pull this into here, we have our texture sample. And here's our texture sample right here. If we were to open up our texture like we had here, and we were to pull up our individual channels like this, this is the channel we want. This actually has our color mask. This is our mask itself, our alpha. We are basically taking our circular progress bar, subtracting our alpha right here from our color mask. And that gives us back this. And it gives us back what we want, which is going to be our color node. And then I'm reversing it to give me our black to white. If we check here. Now we'll have our black to white, and then I'm outputting that value into here, into our opacity mask. And then I'm doing the same thing. If it's above a certain value, I get back a certain result. If it's below a certain value, I get back a certain result. And then I'm using white as a color to determine what you actually see. Let's um, stop previewing that, and we'll get back this result here. So what I'm outputting here, if we go to 1, is going to be our full bar in white. And if I do, let's say 0.7, we're going to get partial bar. And if we do 0.2, we're going to get back a very small amount. And this is also why it goes very quickly at that last part, because if you notice it's 0 0.2, 0 0.1, and then pretty much zero covers this entire last part. And again, blame me, the designer, because I'm an awesome artist. Your white is a huge amount of this bar compared to everything else. A proper gradient would have much smoother ramping from white to black. Again, a professional artist would do this properly. For an unprofessional artist for a concept, the concept works.
Let me change this back to 0.5 to show our half bar. Whoops, that would be the, seriously, my alpha to 0.5. There we go. So now we have our partial bar. And the reason I'm putting, and that is again, that's just our opacity mask. That is saying this much of this image is going to be shown based on my alpha, which is this right here. And this is going to be the color, which is my white. Now, the reason why we have a green bar is, well, if I was to pull up my health bar and look at it, we're just setting the color of our bar based on the parameter on the progress. So if our progress is 100%, I'm telling it to lerp between red and green. 100% is going to give me green. And if it is 0%, it's going to give me red. You can, of course, obviously change it. That's why I made it white. I made it white as our output. So that way you could multiply and change the color easily. If I wanted to, this could be a blue to a green. And as you can see, we have a green bar. We can take damage and it's going to slowly lerp into a blue. Well, slowly, relatively, because I have the damage going slow. And of course, you can modify it as needed. Change this back to one because red and green looks better. There we go. And that's basically going to wrap up this concept video. I'm going to briefly cover what I've done to show you in terms of the progress bars itself. All I'm doing for the circular progress bar is I have a custom event that's setting the value of the alpha parameter. And remember our alpha parameter is this one that drives how much percentage it is. I'm setting the value of that and then I'm setting using a lerp linear color, a color based on the alpha. So again, it comes in as say 0.5. We set the value of the alpha on the material to 0.5. We set the color of value between white and green, roughly 0.5, so halfway between. And then we're setting the color of the image, our image being this image widget that is using the material circular progress bar. For the health bar progress one, it is identical. We have a image with my circular progress bar here, which is my health bar. In the graph, we are doing the same thing, getting the value that I'm passing in for the alpha and setting it and getting a lerp color based on the alpha and setting it. And of course that is going into here changing the alpha value on the if, and it is setting it. If you have any questions regarding any of the individual nodes that have been covered, they all have separate videos giving you more information. I have covered all of the nodes that we use inside this video to create this item, and I've covered all the nodes regarding instanced material dynamic or dynamic instance materials or material instance dynamic. It has many, many names.